Hi, this is Craig Johnson. Uh, I'm the author of the Walt Longmire novels, and uh, I've been asked uh, by the Y.O. Theater to do a reading uh, to help people who might be uh, having a little trouble with cabin fever. <laughs> um, it's uh, We're here in Ucross, Wyoming, population 25, the epicenter of social distancing. And uh, I'm going to actually do a little reading here from uh, my most recent book, um, Land of Wolves. Look at, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. One of the fun things for me, of course, look at, is you know to go back and explore um, the history of the characters. Look at, and you know one of the characters, obviously, that you know I'm, I'm quite taken with is uh, is Walt Longmire, the sheriff of Absaroka County. And we've had a numerous, you know, even entire books, like at where we've gone back in time and seen Walt at different times in his life, like that. And uh, as far as Walt's parents are concerned, you know, I've actually had a couple of different scenes where we've uh, met Walt's mother, but we've never, up until this book, actually met Walt's father. And so, in Land of Wolves, like at one of these scenes, you know, took place, and I think it, you know, it tells you a lot about, you know, who Walt Longmire is, you know, certainly who his father was, and how it is that Walt came to be the man that, uh, that, that occupies my books now. What are you reading, son? I lowered my book and looked at him. The Outlaw Trail, The History of Butch Cassidy. He threw out another graceful cast, one that it seemed to me any trout in the 10-mile length of the middle fork of the Powder River would have been happy to lay into, even this early in the season. The Charles Kelly book? Yes, sir. He nodded, his gray eyes following the fly as it drifted near the opposite bank on a cool March morning, with the melting snow wetter than a well, the hanging droplets clinging to the undersides of the bushes. Good book. He wrote it when there were still people around who knew the Wild Bunch, primary research material being the best. Yes, sir. Is that my sign to first edition? Yes, sir. Giving up on the cast, he stripped the five-weight line in and prepared to present another to the finicky fish. You'll make sure to keep it dry and that it returns to my study, undamaged? Yes, sir. Watching the ripples that swept just under the skim ice of the water where the sun reflected like a jewel case, I kept wondering, why are we here? I guess because it was uncommonly warm for the time of year and my father had gotten one of his wild hares and decided that we should go fishing. We'd tromped through the snow and broke a trail down to the river where he stood and I sat, having scraped the snow from a boulder. He flicked the rod tip forward, but just as he did, the wind came up and carried the gray hackle peacock into the bushes on the other side. March in Wyoming is a useless month where all you can do is wish the wind would stop blowing. He yanked, but the fly stayed stuck. Little wonder to me that Spurina of the Harrisbicks warned Caesar of the Ides of March. He yanked again, but this time the leader broke, the gossamer line falling to the water without the lure. Damn. He pulled another fly from the small wool patch on his vest as I asked about the outlaw. He never killed anybody? Butch Cassidy? Sliding his glasses onto his nose, he slipped the leader tippet through the eye of the fresh fly, expertly tying a clinch knot and clipping the tag in with a small tool that hung from his vest. Nope, and he said he never robbed an individual, just banks and railroads that he said had been robbing the people for years. I watched as my father flipped his arm back to a 12 o'clock position, the line looping out behind him and then suddenly forward, sending his hand tied fly across the stream and under a large bush that hung over the fast moving water. But he robbed banks and banks are where people keep their money. I guess he didn't think of it that way. He adjusted, playing in a little and then mending the line, keeping the arc upstream. Anyway, he went to jail for that, but at his parole hearing, he promised the judge that he'd never rob another bank in Wyoming. Did he? No, he went and robbed banks in Utah and Nevada, so I guess he was a man of his word, of sorts. I glanced around the canyon. And they used to be here? My father nodded, his head upstream. One of their hideouts, a cave, was over there, or so they say. Can we go see it? He turned towards me. I thought we were here to fish. Well, we are, but maybe after we catch a few, we come back to camp empty-handed and that mother of yours is going to think that we were just down here taking a nap. Yes, sir. Dutifully placing his book in my rucksack, I picked up a rod and pulled a few yards of line from my own reel, draping it out in the water and then flipping it forward, rolling the line out about a yard from his. Poacher. Our lines danced to the right in the vibrant water. Do you think they were bad men? He thought about it as he stripped his line and... Well, it's debatable as to whether Butch killed anybody, but at least three of the others did. Feeling a tug at my line, I lifted and watched 
as a 12-inch brown trout arched and spit my fly back at me. Damn. I've told you, don't pull up to set the hook. Go sideways and preferably upstream so that the current does some of the work for you. I moved past him and redirected my cast. He had pulled his own line in and then threw it, and I watched as the gentle loop played out on the surface of the water, and an even larger brown snapped up the fly, my father steadily hauling him in. I watched as he netted the fish, carefully taking it and slapping its head against a nearby boulder before flipping open his fillet knife, cleaning him out, and placing him on the dampened moss in his willow creel. But Butch and Sundance never killed anybody. He stood, towering above me. That's the story. So maybe they weren't such bad guys. Maybe they just rejected the rules of society and wanted to make up their own game. His voice took on a different tone. They were thieves, Walter. They took things that didn't belong to them, intimidating and harassing people all over this country. The amount of effort that they put into stealing and hiding, think what they could have accomplished if they'd turned their efforts towards an honest life. Gunned down at 40 years of age, they were men of low character, and they all met bad ends. Quietly stripping in my line, I watched and then waited as he moved up the bank. He turned and looked back at me. There's a tendency in our society to romanticize the exploits of outlaws and gangsters. An insistence that they're Robin Hood type characters, that they have more in common with us than the people whom we hire to protect us and enforce our laws. I don't buy that. I think that when you pick up a gun and use it to take things away from people, it doesn't matter how clever or charming you are, you're just a thief, plain and simple. I nodded. He studied me for what seemed like a very long while. You wanna go look at that cave? Yes, sir. He started off as I secured my line and stumbled after him with a hidden smile. Um, how do you get low character anyway? He called back. By not listening to your father.